Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Cherica Brown again, and we're on episode 10 of Cherica Be Talking, cause I be talking. Y'all, this weekend was very long for me. I'm actually really tired. It's midnight, but it's only fitting that I go ahead and get this video to you all because this is the perfect weekend for this particular topic. So I basically started this weekend with a short film that I'm a part of. I got home on Saturday going into Sunday morning around 1 a.m. At around 2 a.m. time sprung forward. So 2 a.m. became 3 a.m. I was completely beat. My body was torn down and sore and everything. I had to stretch really good because I had to be up that morning to go to a lifestyle photo shoot that I booked as well on Sunday morning. Also, during the lifestyle photo shoot, my friend's baby shower had already started. So I got to the baby shower extremely late towards the end, like when everybody was opening the gifts, which was fine because I still made it to show my love. So it all worked out for the best. And then afterwards, my friends that were able to make it to the baby shower on time, I met up with them and we all went out to a Mexican restaurant nearby where we had good vibes, good food, good energy, and we just enjoyed ourselves. And now I'm home and it's officially Monday morning. So it's a new week, new goals. So I'm going to take a good shower, good hot shower. I'm going to possibly stretch again. Wake up in the morning, read my word of the day, daily bread, and I'm going to tackle on this new week. But this episode 10 is going to be a little different because I'm basically just going to give you 10 pointers or 10 tips or 10 things that you could possibly do to help balance friendships and life as adults. My last video was about clingy friends. So if you haven't checked out episode nine, make sure you go ahead and check out episode nine. Maybe you are a clingy friend. Maybe you have a clingy friend. Know someone who have clingy friends, but just go ahead and share that video and make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. So number one is take advantage of FaceTime video chats and just group FaceTime and just phone calls in general. Y'all, technology is expanding and we got to take full advantage of that. It's beautiful that we have technology. They didn't have technology a long time ago. You got to think about it. They were using beepers and pay phones. We literally can pick up our phone and see someone on the camera, on the video chat and talk to them and have a personable conversation. So FaceTime, I really, I personally, I love FaceTime. I use it almost every single day. You even have it where social media platforms allows you to video chat. So take full advantage of that even in your friendships. Number two, have a girl's day out, have a guy's day out. If you're a guy, encourage your girlfriend to go and spend time with her girlfriends. If you are a woman, go ahead and encourage your boyfriend or your husband to go and spend time with his guy friends or his male friends. Don't get mad when your spouse or the person you're with say that they want to go and hang with their friends because their friends were there kind of before you. If they were their friends you know, since childhood or a long time ago, it's important to have those breathers away from one another so that you can kind of go and have you some fun, not too much fun because you are in a relationship, but you go and have that fun with your friends and enjoy your friend's company and then come back home. It feels good so that you're not just up under your spouse 24 seven. And that's actually healthy for your relationships, whether you're single or taken, Make sure you spend time like a girl's night out or a guy's night out. That's so important to keep yourself going. Number three, when you have free time, schedule a breakfast, brunch, lunch, or dinner date. Maybe you and your friends always spent time at a specific restaurant. Figure out when everyone's schedules are clear and then just go ahead and set a date and a time to meet up and go ahead and feast at your favorite restaurant while you all chop it up and catch up with what's going on and what's what in each other's lives. Number four, plan trips like annual or just spur of the moment trips. 
So maybe you all have a place that you always wanted to visit. Find time when you all can visit this place. I know someone personally who says they go on a trip, I believe every Valentine's Day weekend with their friend group, because I believe that Monday is either Memorial Day or it's a special holiday where most workplaces give you off. So they found that convenient for them to take their annual group friends trip. Now, when you become committed, taken in a relationship, married, that may change because you would want to spend Valentine's Day weekend with your spouse, or maybe you would include your spouse in this trip, or maybe all of your friends end up in a relationship and you just use that weekend still for the same thing, but everyone have separate cabins or separate rooms and come together to do fun activities together. I don't know, you would just decide what is convenient for you and the people around you and plan accordingly for any type of trip, whether it's annual, every once in a while, or every two years, see what works for everybody and try and stay consistent with that planning. Number five is basically the same as number four, but if you're in a relationship, try and plan couple trips. So maybe it's specific places you would go when you're single in certain places you would go if you're in a relationship, not to say that you can't go to certain places if you're in a relationship, but for example, Miami. Normally when you're single and you're having fun and you're younger, you want to go to a place like Miami because you're just wild and out and you're having a group fun time. I know now people are going to Denver as a couple. So maybe you wanna plan like a couple's trip where you all go to Denver and you, are in a snow cabin and you're snowed in together and you're skiing together and you're doing little cute couple stuff together in the snow. So plan couple trips if you're in a relationship and even your single friends can come on a couple's trip because more than likely you'll have more than one single friend and they can group up together. Number six, invite your friends over to your house. So you may have some special holidays that you celebrate with everyone and you're like, hey, I'm having Thanksgiving at my house this year. If you want to, stop by. If you don't, that's cool. So maybe you're spending Christmas at your house or everyone is going over to your family member's house and you all are also inviting friends. Just make sure you extend that invitation to your friends as well. Like, hey, this is what we're doing. If you want to come, I would love it for you to come. We can all have fun extend the invitation on special holidays because a lot of times on special holidays, most people are off of work or they take off of work. Number seven, go to events that your friends invite you to. So maybe you're free and your friend invites you to something, just show face and show love. That means a lot and that gives some people reassurance to just see your face and you all can talk and you laugh about some things, catch up on some things. Number eight, if you and your friends have kids, maybe you can schedule play dates where you all go to the park or you go to the skating rink. So while the kids are out having fun, doing their thing, they're bonding with one another, the parents are sitting back as friends, talking, catching up with one another, and just having that time and you're killing like three birds with one stone because maybe you all are they're eating ice cream, they're eating food, they're running around playing, you all are catching up at the same time, so they're getting tired. By the time you get home, they just need to take a bath, and then they're out for the night, and you feel good because you've had time to sit and talk to your friend, and it's like a breather. Sometimes it's almost like therapy when you're able to just talk and vent to your friend for hours at a time. You're like, wow. I finally got some things off my chest. Sometimes it just feels good to let it out to someone that you can confide in. Number nine, celebrate milestone birthdays with one another. So you have 25, you have dirty 30, you have 50, those type of birthdays you can spend with your friends. So maybe you want to go to dinner with your spouse, but you decide, hey, I'm gonna take a girl's trip as well or perhaps you want to have a dinner with your friends, but you say, then I'll go ahead and take the trip with my spouse. Those are some good things that you can do for milestone birthdays because you're gonna spend every other birthday likely with your spouse anyway. So for milestone birthdays, maybe you want to go ahead and take that girl's trip or that guy's trip, if that's what guys do. I don't know too many guys that take guys' trip. 
Well, my dad has taken trips before, like for Super Bowl with his friends. So that could be a thing, but guys don't take as many trips as girls. But yeah, that's a good thing you could do for milestone birthdays. Just decide how you can even have an intimate party. You don't even have to go anywhere. You can have a party with your friends, your closest friends, and that'll make you feel good. Get out and do karaoke with some of your favorite songs, or you can rent the karaoke speakers and microphones now and make a playlist with you and your friends' favorite songs growing up or at whatever point in your life that you all met. Just create a fun playlist where you just have this night out of karaoke and y'all just have the time of your life and celebrate those milestone birthdays together that's very special and that feels good to just rekindle those relationships the last one is very simple but it's really important number 10 is be understanding and don't count favors so don't be petty you want to be an adult about this because you're now an adult so don't be childish if someone miss your birthday don't try and miss theirs so you have to think about the things that people aren't even telling you people go through so much in life no matter how close you think you are to them you never know fully what someone is experiencing and what they had to go through to show you a little bit of love a little bit of gratitude a little bit of attention so you have to respect people's time and understand that everyone can't make everything. Don't play tick for tack and don't count favors because a true friend doesn't count favors. And remind yourself that a true friend wouldn't intentionally hurt you. So if you're questioning whether someone is intentionally hurting you, you may want to question if they're truly your friend. Don't neglect time with people that you care about just because you want to be petty and selfish and you felt like they couldn't be there when you needed them or wanted them to be. But yeah, this is just 10 tips that I thought of quickly at 12 a.m. for keeping your friendship strong during adult life, y'all. There's so many more that I can mention, but y'all know I'll be back because I be talking. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll be back. Peace.